What's up? My name is Curtis. Welcome to Nonchalant Garage. Today, I'm going to be doing an experiment with reverse dyeing, or also known as discharge dyeing, my Rafa Classic jersey. I was inspired to try this because I figured it'd be a fun way to give my six-year-old jersey a brand new life. As you can see, the original black on this jersey is significantly faded on the back and on the shoulders. So if you too have an old jersey you're thinking about discarding or donating, stick around as this could turn out to be very cool or very disastrous. So the first step was to find out what kind of bleach to use and honestly I was just going to uncap the Clorox bleach in my laundry room and just douse it on the jersey. But before I completely destroy the fabric with chlorine bleach, I read the label and I found out that this fabric has a blend of wool and polyester. So I went to the local arts and crafts store looking for a more subtle fabric color remover and I found Ritz color remover, which apparently works well with wool but may have a limited effect on polyester depending on how it was originally dyed. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this turns out. So without further ado, let's get to the dyeing process. Following the instructions of the Ritz color remover, it requires the fabric to be cleaned and damp. With the jersey slightly wet, I'm going to be tying random areas of the jersey as well as a cross section. I'm particularly excited for this project because it's an opportunity to create something totally unique. It could totally change the color of the jersey and create imperfect patterns. And I love that because it just sounds so spontaneous and it could turn out to be very nonchalant. And it should be noted that this RIT color remover smells terrible, which is why I'm doing it in my garage with this camping stove. It requires you to have a large pot, big enough for the fabric to move around freely. The instructions require the water to be at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, Next, I'm going to be soaking the tied jersey in the pot at the maintained heat of 200 degrees and I'm going to see what happens to the color of the jersey. Once 20 minutes has elapsed and the jersey has turned into the desired color, I'm going to pull it out and rinse it in the sink. Alright, so I'm about 25 minutes in and it's not looking like it's changing color in any drastic way, so this project might be a bust. Well, it's a day after discharge dyeing my jersey, and as you can tell, it turned out both cool and disastrous. The dye did a good job in changing the color of the inside of the jersey, but it shrank the jersey so small that I can probably just sell it at a kid's gap now. Also, it didn't do much to the outside color, which was the entire point. But you know what they say, you only fail when you stop trying, which is why I pulled this jersey out of my wardrobe. This is a jersey I rarely use, and it's a core jersey, which consists of 92% polyester. So instead of discharge dyeing this time, I'll be just tying up the jersey as it is, and using a synthetic dye since the color of the jersey is already so light.
Whoa, the colors on this jersey ended up looking really good. Like, I love the orange gritty texture at the top, combined with this blue white lines that kind of reminds me of lightning. I can definitely see myself wearing this jersey more often now. It looks really sick. You know what's funny is that I had this jersey on Craigslist for $30, and I was getting lowball offers at $15, and now it's pretty much priceless. Actually, I take that back. Everything has a price. I have a number of other jerseys I don't wear that often, and it'd be fun to apply this dyeing technique to those as well. You know, looking at the marketplace for cycling jerseys today, it seems as though a lot of brands and styles are just so ubiquitous, with the exception of a few brands. What I see is a lot of solid colors, and to me, they end up looking a bit too sterile with no personality. Not to mention, they're super expensive, and in my opinion, you're better off buying a secondhand jersey for a fraction of the price and making it your own by dyeing it whatever you want. Of course, you'd want to get a jersey that you already trust that fits. In addition to that, it's better for the environment to buy secondhand. If you thought this video was interesting, not only pump that like button, but also leave a comment in the section below. It helps spread the nonchalant vibes, and I want to hear your thoughts on what you think of dyeing your own cycling jersey, both positive and negative. Your voice matters. With that said, I'll see you at the next video, and remember to stay nonchalant.